No one loves Damon Targaryen more than me, okay? But okay. if you compare him to Jaime Lannister, in almost every category, Jaime's better than Damon Targaryen. I don't is this a hot take? Is this like am I gonna be crucified on the internet for this? Oh dude, it's a super hot take. It's like it's, what do we always say? Oh, the bad on. guy music plays when Jamie <laughs> enters the room. So yeah, of course. And for some reason the good guy music plays when Damon enters the room, even though Well, uh, it's, it's kinda it's like questionable. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's right, you're right. It's it's up in the air. It's up in the air. Both these are naughty boys, okay? Both these guys are naughty boys. I love them both. I don't know what this elitism you have here about loving Damon more than everybody else. I think I love Damon. More than me? Well, I don't know about more, but similar. Okay, we're going to talk about both of these guys, but we're not going to spoil anything past season one of House of the Dragon for Damon, you know, what, what happens in the books. But at the end of this video, we might go into a little bit more of, like, you know, what happens, uh, you know, the rest of Damon's life, according to the books, but not official within House of the Dragon yet. Yeah, the material covered in House of the Dragon, like season one, I would say it kind of gives you a good gauge of how like capable and strong this guy is like the rest of it's kind of story driven it's not so much feet wise but we'll go into a little a little bit at the end oh, feet wise your favorite so you know at first glance at this damon versus jamie who would you pick and chat i want to i would say chat i know i do too let us know who do you pick initially but after you give it some thought yeah, don't just it comment anymore? right away you think about it from well actually no Comment right away, then think about it, then comment again. Okay, just just can you just comment every ten seconds or so throughout the video? Yeah. I think that Jamie destroys Damon in all ways, like you say. I hate to say like the crux of the video up front like this, but dude, yeah. Jamie is OP, man. He has his little skill tree like maxed out. That little that little hexagon that has the various skill traits like speed, charisma, attack strength, incest, dude, brotherly and sisterly love, father, like most Giga Chad father. He has all of his stats maxed. It's unfair. I'm not saying he deserves it, but I do also think he deserves it. So, well, let's, well, let's go category by category here, right? Swordsmanship. I think without a doubt, Jamie is way better than Damon. Damon loses to Kristen Cole, who is a good uh, Kingsguardman, you know, warrior at this time period, uh, but he's not known as like one of the most legendary fighters of all time. He's good, you know, but he's not yeah, like, Sir and, Arthur Dane good, right? Well, the case to be fair, no one is Sir Arthur Dane. He's the, actually he's the true maxed out stat guy. That he's like the character at the beginning of every anime. That's like the, like okay, like the hero figure to the protagonist, the one that's perfect in every way, and then they die. Right. Like if ever, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've maybe seen Vinland Saga, but it's like the main character's dad, or it's like All Might from My Hero Academia, whatever. But like in their prime, right? They can't be beaten, right. and then they die. That's Arthur Dane. So they it, can't be beaten, and then they're beat. Oh, dude, imagine that. <laughs> How does that work? But it's through some kind of trickery. But yeah, swordsmanship, dude. There's absolutely no question. Arthur Dane is probably the only person who could beat him. I'm pretty sure in the books it's stated, too, that the only people even stronger than Jamie physically are Arthur Dane, Robert Baratheon, and then the Clegane twins, right? I think Not twins, brothers. Twins. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure those are the only people stronger than him, even physically let alone with skill, of which I think Jamie is probably also number one, at least in his era, to Arthur Dane. Right. So it's like, dude, if you and, combine, how strong and skilled can you possibly be? Like, uh, Damon's a good warrior, and he's a good, like, commander and strategist, but I don't think, he's not taking this in terms of swordsmanship. No way. Right, yeah, so Jamie wins, and you say, oh, well, Jamie lost his hand. It's like, well, okay, well, Damon loses his hand. What what happens to him? If Damon loses his dragon, I don't know how much of an imposing force is even uh, you know, within combat. But, okay, let's go to the sword. Me and you, you know, channel, hint, hint, our hilts hurt. Yeah. We love hilts. We and, love you know, one hilts. Of our biggest, <laughs> one of our biggest obsessions is Star Wars hilts, honestly. But Dark Sister, I think... I, got, I think I got to give this one to Damon. For hilt wise, you know, sword style here, Dark Sister looks way better than Jamie's sword. Jamie's sword, when you look at it, his like original sword from you know season one of Game of Thrones that we get in the show, right? It kind of looks like modern Star Wars. Movie. I agree. It looks like, like a... Palpatine's lightsaber. That's what it looks like. <laughs> well, it looks like his little look... phallic little thing. It's nice that they put the cross guard on it to you know detach from that. But you're right. It kind of looks reptilian. Well, it's this these ribs inside here with this very like cylindrical cut here as ellipses. Well, I don't know how you describe that, right? No, right, People exactly. I'm, I'm sure you could. To this. <laughs> I'm sure you could forge this in old times, but I don't know. I don't. I doubt this is a very common practice. I do think that Damon's sword looks better, but if you look at it, see how the cross guard, how it flares downward in that cringe dragon shape. You see that? Yeah. To me, mm -hmm. that's impractical. If it was flaring in the opposite direction, then it would provide your hand a little bit more like uh, an actual guard because it's pointing backwards, like so your hand it. couldn't slip. Well, now, dude, you're gonna slip and 
right off of this thing. Look at that. You lube this up with a little bit of sweat. Your hand's <laughs> going to slip right off of there. Look at that. It's like a little curve. Yeah. You don't want that. You want the opposite direction. Uh, maybe we'll go into another rankings here. You know, best hilts to be used for some sort of other fun activities with some lube on it. That'd be a very interesting ranking. I agree with you for Dark Sister, but I don't think Dark it's, Sister, it's right. a clean sweep, dude. Yeah, e- well, so even Oathkeep. Oath- Oathkeeper looks cool, but that's mo- mostly a, a Brienne sword than a Jamie sword, even though he, he's gifted Dark Sister. And then also Widow's Whale that uh, he uses, I think, at the end of the TV show. Eh, sword is okay. Looks fine. It's Valyrian okay, steel, but, but the, still. The cross Dark guard is too, is too skinny. And then, dude, when it comes to Oathkeeper, are you kidding me? That thing is way too busy, and it looks like it's painful to hold. Are you going to yeah, be fighting with this thing and gripping it? No way. Yeah, exactly. You're going to feel like you have some sort of uh, hand paralysis because it's so spiky the whole time. Like, oh, no. Do I have a, I've been playing video games too long and my wrist is going to sleep on oh, me? Dude. Oh, no, wait. That's just the detailing on my hilt. I'm going to callous your hand the F up, dude. Like, you better hope you're never single because, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. Oh, okay, Are so armor. Sure? Listen, I think if we compare armor right now, drip-wise, I think you got to go with Dame. I... I Went out the gate saying Damon sucks, but you know I'm giving him these easy ones right now, right? His drip, his sword, it looks great. His armor in House of Dragons season one, and even I think we see in the trailer for season two, it looks great. And it's better than Jamie's, even though Jamie's does look good. He has like the same armor as his dad does, and his dad looks. I mean, I think Tywin even pulls it up better than Jamie. Oh, does. you f- dude, when Tywin pulls into Tywin Aaron Hall good. on a yes. horse, man, Tywin is like that's the most amazing. That's one of the best shots in Game of Thrones. I've been sending you pictures of that lately. <laughs> I think there's like two or three times <laughs> in the last few months. Oh, there it is. There it is. Uh, but Damon looks cooler, actually. And it's only with the long hair, by the way, too. With Damon, with the long hair and the black armor. The helmet I could take or leave because those giant wings and shit, man. It's like, unless you're Robert yeah. Baratheon, Demon of the Trident, pulling up with antlers. It's like, get all that bullshit off your hat. Yeah, I know Damon takes it off when he's in combat. He only wore it at the tourney. So when he's at uh, the Stepstones and other places when he's in combat, he takes off the wings. He's like, oh, these are very decorative, and they get in the way. So at least he's that conscious about it, that he's not yeah. just you know trying to go over the top edge lord. But you know what? But Jamie still looks good in his drip, and I think he, he looks pretty good in his uh, Kingsguard armor as well. So Damon's got maybe drip on him, but... I know we're not getting really the character analysis yet, but just give me a fucking second here. I gotta talk about the hair. Jamie's hair consistently looks better than Damon's hair because Damon cuts his hair short, and then he has kind of like a soccer mom or like a middle aged mom haircut when his hair is like like right on his shoulders. Yeah, Damon it's, looks it's the best when his look. hair is long. D- Damon, keep your hair long. Yeah, the longer like the better the with him. Uh, but it doesn't even matter, man. Even if it isn't pound for pound, like or more frequently, like the the, the mean right, the mean haircut right. style. Yeah, Jamie wins. But uh, Damon's got no eyebrows, dude. It, it, <laughs> That's he's awesome. Got, okay, it's <laughs> got, oh yeah, Super Saiyan three Targaryen, super cool, dude. And when you combine that with the short hair, it's like two strikes, man. It's double strike. You know what I'm saying? With the long hair, uh, the Super Saiyan three thing, yeah, I actually do like it. But when you go with the mm-hmm. short hair and no eyebrow, it's not right. That's alopecia, dude. It's not. It's not good. No Boyne. Yeah, no Boyne. I, I get that. But okay, so let's let's go with the the nicknames of Jamie versus Damon here. Jamie's known as the Kingslayer, and Damon is the Rogue Prince. Which one do you take, or which one do you like more of the two here? <sighs> I kind of think Rogue Prince is cringe, dude. I think kind of it's, it's kind of yeah. Cringe as balls. I think so too. <laughs> so it almost sounds it's like a, a nickname he made up for himself. You know, it's yeah. like he told some he paid somebody off to start that name about him, like. I, I want to be king, but I'm so far back in the succession now. It's like, how about I'm the rogue prince? Like, How cool would that be? It's like, not very cool, dude. How about I play by my own rules? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so cool. Uh, and, uh, well, I, okay, listen, rogue, whenever I hear it, I have a positive association because of the X-Men 90s cartoon shot of thick rogue. And let's not even side. speak of the new version that we've well, seen around with. Don't, like don't even know 10. about it. Not, do, you not never, even yep, think about yep, it. Yep, yep. No, I don't. Does that doesn't exist. Uh, Kingslayer, right? Now, I think Jamie needs to do a better job of PRing his name for Kingslayer, right? It, it sounds kind of badass, but they kind of use it as a slant against him. Like, you killed the king you were supposed to keep safe, right? And every time someone says that, he should be like, oh, which king was that? Oh, was it the Mad King? You know, the one ever called <laughs> Mad, the insane guy that yeah. burned people alive? Oh, yeah, I killed that guy? Oh, you know, naughty me, bad on me. Sorry, guys. Dude, honestly, especially to Ned Stark, that uppity piece of shit, looking down on Jamie constantly for doing this thing. They killed the guy who just brutally murdered Ned's 
brother and father. Are you serious, dude? You should be on your hands and knees worshiping this guy. Your butt's in the air begging for more and more and more from Jamie because you owe him mm-hmm. everything, man. This guy avenged you, and you're, uh, it's uh, it's crazy. But well, if we go on to that scene still, like, you know, when Jamie kills the Mad King, it's not like it was evenly matched, and the Mad King was, like, doing some, like, Kamehameha wave or some, like, huge spirit bomb. It's like, oh, if the Mad King gets the special move off, then he's going to actually destroy all the Lannister uh, soldiers within King's Landing. But then all of a sudden, Jamie backstabs him. It's like, no, I was just about to kill them all, Jamie. Yeah, I was you so, betrayed so close. Your king. It's like, the Lannisters had the city. They, they're sacking the city. The people that run into the room that see Jamie killing or at least uh with his sword bloody with the mad king's blood on it are lannister soldiers right so whether or not the mad king was going to get captured or he was just going to be killed by honestly i think jamie did him a solid here i'm just gonna kill you so you don't have to suffer anymore because we know what happened last time you were in prison for extended period of time you started growing out your beard and (laughs) growing out your finger little fingy nails man yeah yeah Yeah, uh, i I mean, I agree, I agree with that sentiment, but that's just not how it works in Westeros. And like, no matter what, if you're Kingslayer, you're dishonorable. So, I, Jamie maybe could have waited a little bit, you know. Unless right. you know, we have a previous video kind of discussing Jamie and Mad King, and it's altogether possible that the killing was a total accident. There's various little mishaps that could have contributed to that. But assuming he killed him intentionally, it's kind of uh-huh. a bad move. Like, you know what this is going to represent for the rest of your life in West. At least you'd think so. Jamie's not that stupid, but. Yeah, I mean the name's still cooler, man. Kingslayer, it, badass. Kingslayer, yeah, almost like Kingmaker, Christian Cole. Honestly, I think Christian Cole. Eh, maybe not. Maybe that might be the stretch. That might be the hottest take. Christian Cole is better than Damon. I think that's a really hot take. Uh, yeah, it's a that's take super. Than, <laughs> <laughs> Radioactive. Yeah, it is. Oh, especially since it's airing right now. Fuck, dude. I don't even know if I'm on board with that one, man. Okay, well we'll see. Maybe I'll think of a few good points, but uh, Jamie. And Damon, while they're leaders, I'm going to compare them as, right? So we see Damon as a leader when he's in the Stepstones. We see him as the leader of the Kingsguard, or excuse me, Kingsguard, City Watch, right? He gives them the drip of the gold cloaks, which is another point on the drip factor for Damon, giving them the gold cloaks. But you see him just, like, cutting bits and pieces off in episode one of House of the Dragon. And I do appreciate him cleaning up the streets of King's Landing, but I don't know. Would you rather, who's the better leader between the two, Damon or Jamie? Who would you pick here? I mean, what, I'd what I'd like to. I my instinct says Jamie. Like logically speaking, like there's a lot of uh, like positive words said about Jamie, you know, in the books, mm-hmm. and I guess they imply it in the show a little bit too. And Jamie's a very intimidating force on the battlefield, so naturally he's he'd be like a, a good leader. Like if you're an opposing army, and you know the reputation of Jamie Lannister, and you see this dude leading your army, you're going to be a little bit more nervous than usual. I think, you know, I would think so. But the right. way that especially the shows portrayed it. I almost want to say Damon. Like, they're going way out of their way to emphasize it. Like you said, with the gold cloaks, he, like, cracked the whip, and it was effective as balls, not to mention what we saw on the Stepstones, you know, et cetera, versus what do we see from Jamie as far as attack leading goes? He can't even control his own man. His man attacks Ned Stark, which he has to knock that man out after that as punishment. Right. And then there's an off-screen battle that he leads, and he gets captured. And he gets his hand cut. Yeah. You know, he's like a little bitch in that way. I'm just saying, I'm not logically speaking, Jamie should take it, but I the way they portrayed it almost seems like they're trying to make Damon superior. Yeah, I think Damon in the show version, at least here, we see that I think Damon is the better leader of the two, at least what we see. But, you know, Jamie, when he doesn't have his hand anymore, he's a little better as a leader, I think. Understanding that he's not he can't put on the facade of uh, oh, I'm a little I'm a little stinker, I'm a little kingslayer edge part of him but I don't know I feel like Damon's boosted up by the fact that he has a dragon you know like a lot of things he does in his life he's like oh yeah well uh in case something happens to me I just have this what f-35 <laughs> e- oh, equivalent living creature yeah, that bottomless I just clip. take yeah so like yeah he has a cheat code in case anything you know goes bad but what does Jamie have you know maybe his father's name but I don't know I would love to see if Damon was put in a similar situation as Damon how he would act, you know, if he was in prison, like by the, I don't know who would be, like the Greens, right? Imagine if he was in prison by the Greens, you know, kind of like how Jamie was captured by the Starks, right? How he would act, like. Well, no, that, so that's, I, and that's that's what I mean. It's like you think about it without the narratives involved, and just kind of go mm-hmm. with what you know about these two characters. Imagine th- these two leading an army in like a opposing field, and there's no dragons involved, and they're going at each other. Like honestly, who do you think would win? I, I think you kind of have to go with the more organized, because that, that's kind of how I view it. Damon is almost like a guy who'd be leading the Second Sons or like a bunch of mercenary groups, you know, these unconventional fighting ways. And I don't yeah. think that that is actually going to win 
you know, like no, no sneaky business, uh, no guerrilla warfare, you know, stuff. I think in an yeah. open battlefield in a traditional battle, I think Jamie takes it, which I think naturally yeah. makes him a better leader. I, I also think if Jamie wanted to, and he was in the position of leading one of these mercenary type, like underhanded type of attacks, I think he would do it better than Damon as well. I just think Damon's in those situations more, which is usually used narratively to like, you know, get the upper hand and get the jump right. on people. So I think that's the only reason. I think it's a false flag, man. Jamie yeah, wins. Well, uh, I think Jamie wins. Also, I'm kind of skeptical about Damon's ability to, you know, wage war based off what we saw in the Stepstones where they just hid in their caves and that's how they were able to survive that whole time. The show should have done a better job of explaining that because it's like, oh, we turn the caves. What do we do? It's like, I don't know. I guess just... Dude, have a dragon out. shoot there... some fire in one of these caves. It sucks all the oxygen out. They're all dead. You have that's... you have two dragons. You know, you had sea smoke and Caraxes, uh down there. So And yeah. that's that says something about the sea snake too. He couldn't figure shit out. But see, this is one more thing I'll say about this topic too. In the battlefield, if we take away the dragon especially, it's like the mm -hmm. standard with Damon is you assume he's gonna be on a dragon, right? So if he shows up off his dragon. I think a lot of people would look at him and say, like, oh, dude, like, this is my chance to kill someone prominent. He's not even as, he doesn't have his dragon. Like, he's defenseless, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Versus uh, Jamie, who is known as, like, dude, this is like a god of a man. Like, you, you have no hope of standing against him. He could probably take out five dudes. I'm pretty sure there's a moment in the uh -huh. books, too, where, or maybe this is in the show. I don't remember which one it was, but uh, some dude, like, on the battlefield wouldn't attack him just because he looked into Jamie's eyes. And was so intimidated, he just couldn't. Uh -huh. He couldn't do it. That, yeah, I don't think base. Damon inspires Imagine that kind that. of fear. Well, maybe not off his dragon, but also you have to think every time you see Damon, he just is attached to his blood worm dragon that probably strikes fear into people more than he does. Well, speaking about the Sepstones too here, I saw this thing on, on Twitter where they're going through the script of how they were describing the events, like how it was said in the script, and I, I, maybe I should have been more prepared for this and you know, wrote this down or put it up. Maybe I'll put it up. You'll have a nice maybe, we'll see. display of this. But um, They're basically saying that, hey, Damon emerges from the caves where he, he slayed the crab feeder, right? And now he's reborn as a dragon covered in blood. I was like, what was he beforehand that he wasn't a dragon? Like, his behavior beforehand was very dragon-like. It's, it's dragon-esque. It's not like he was anyway. Yeah, it's not like he was, um, you know, just like a wholesome little schoolboy, and then he's like, oh, fine, I'm going to do whatever it takes to win, and after I've slain the crab feeder, now I'm bathing in the blood of my enemies. And oh, right. It's, it's almost like, the way that's phrased, it's almost like uh, his innocence was taken from him that day. Or like, you know, he like, <laughs> yeah. he like got his hands dirty for the first time, like against his will. It's like, dude, this dude has been cracking skulls since he was born, you know, right. he's angsty yeah. as shit. Very poor <laughs> narrative phrasing there. Right, and also he beats the shit out of that one messenger too. You know how to inspire leadership on the battlefield. Okay, Guys, but like, if here's a here's a message here's a message from your king, your brother. Oh yeah, thank you. Here, uh, you mind if I put my <laughs> helmet into your skull real quick? Dude, if somebody delivered me a little <laughs> scroll in a bitch little way like that guy did, I'd kick his ass uh. too. Are you serious? <laughs> Come on, did you see that? Rewatch that scene. It de okay, if the guy had a tone, he's like, here's your message. <laughs> and you're like, okay. Oh, what? oh, I fucking hate this He message. said that with his <laughs> body. His body language perfectly <laughs> embodied this tone of voice. If you watch it again, you're going to hate this guy. Uh, okay, well, if you look at them both, they both love their brothers, right? Jamie and Tyrion and then Damon and the series. Yeah, yep. But who do you think actually loves their brother more? Because I think they both love their brother. But in the show, definitely I think Jamie loves his brother more. You know, we'll see what happens in um, the end of the books within A Song of Ice and Fire. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, as much as I think Damon loves the series, he's such a stinker to him this whole time. You know? Like, yeah, he, he just is. won't let no, him. He just let it. Stop. Just find any other girl besides his daughter, dude. Just, like, leave <laughs> your brother's daughter I alone. It's unbelievable. I mean, you could make the same argument for Jamie and, you know, it's like find someone else besides your brother's sister, right? But J Tyrion doesn't give a shit. Right, so that, yeah, I guess yeah, there's yeah. there's a difference there, but yeah, I I completely agree with that. I think I think that uh, Jamie is way more genuinely loving to Tyrion. Like uh, at the moment where, oh, I guess I, I shouldn't say this. I'm trying to draw a comparison that maybe doesn't really make sense. Like I was gonna say, when Tyrion is on trial, you know, for the killing of Joffrey, which of course he didn't do. Jamie is not right. in a position at that point to help him at all. But if he mm -hmm. was there, like there is no way he would not get his brother out of that situation. Absolutely, and I question. If that's always true for Damon and Viserys, because like, I think depending on the day, Damon wouldn't do it. You know, I think generally speaking, maybe if you again you take the average of 
their entire lives. I think Damon would save his brother's life or whatever. Yeah. But I, you know, I'm not even sure. In Fire and Blood, in the books, this isn't a spoiler for After House of the Dragon season one, but what we see when Damon returns with Rhaenyra to King's Landing, like shortly before Viserys dies, they really go out of their way in the show to make it look like, oh, Damon's like really respects his brother and loves his brother, even though he shares few words with him, you know? Like he yeah. helps Viserys up the stairs and that one of the amazing, best amazing <laughs> throne room scene. Oh, so good. One of the best scenes in the whole franchise. Uh, and that's not in the books anywhere. At least I don't think it is. I reread Fire and Blood pretty recently too, and I don't remember anything like that happening. I'm pretty sure oh. Damon and Viserys are like very distant from each other during that video and really solidifying right. the blacks versus the greens. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I think after a certain point in their lives, Damon and Viserys are not that close, at least from the Damon side of things. And I kind of think Viserys maybe just gave up on his brother too. Maybe there's a little bit of hope in the distance there, but it's nothing like like the bro relationship Tyrion and Jamie. Remember when Jamie busts in oh, there yeah. when Tyrion's with mm-hmm. like two prostitutes? Oh, I know. And the the whole thing, you know, I guess in the books, you know, he tells uh Tyrion that he actually knew uh, this girl wasn't a prostitute. Uh, Tyrion's first wife, right? That uh, Tywin yeah. had a whole uh, train ran on her right. in front of him. And, you know, like he tells him that and it really kind of fringes their relationship in the books, right? Between Jamie and Tyrion. But, you know, in the show, if we just compare the show, because in, like you said, in the show, Damon and Viserys are really close. In the show, Jamie and Tyrion are like closer, um, you know, especially at this point in the books because they haven't met back up together. Even if they do, we don't even know if they do in the books. But yeah, yeah show wise, I still think Tyrion and Jamie take it right. Damon's a little stinker. I think he loves his brother, but listen, I like on the fringe of too early of a joke. Right? Oh, too soon, too soon. You can't say that. Yeah. But but Damon says this joke for who? These like degenerate people in this brothel makes an air for the day joke for his brother's sake. It's like, come on, dude, come on. Yeah, but don't make that I'm, joke a, about I'm your a brother. little sympathetic because it's like, you know, we're all thinking it. We're all thinking it. <laughs> it's like, why, why live a lie? Even from, from King V's perspective, True. like he gets okay. so mad. He gets so mad. But it's like, why are you getting mad? Would you rather everybody around you? Okay, it's like, it's like, so let's say your wife died. Okay. Yesterday. And it's, right. has, it has since then become public knowledge that your entire friend group had sex with your wife. Okay? <laughs> Everybody I knows it. I'm going to meet it. her real soon. Right. I'm just going to bite a bullet. <laughs> if that's, that's the case. Everybody yeah. knows it, okay? You and all your friends know it. You're sitting there. You know all your friends know it. Your friends are sitting there. Each one of them knows that everybody else in the room knows it. It's like, why can't you make the joke? Like You're all thinking it. Or at least talk about it, right? Is that really going to offend you more at that point? If you're just sitting there if, stewing if, in this? You know, if I'm not there and the jokes are made, maybe it's acceptable. But if I'm there, just don't say it. Like that that's like if Damon was to say it while the series and him were Damon at the didn't say it when he's there though. You know what I mean? It's I know, like, I know. That I'm it's better, right? Your situation it sounds worse if I'm like in the room with you guys, you know, we're all just yeah, I, I should, about my wife. I, I, hold on. Sorry, yeah, I'll amend it. I'll amend it. It's true. <laughs> it's it's I know all my friends know it. My friends know that I know it. We're not together at the time. My friends should be able right. to joke about that. And if it gets back to me, it's like, how dare my friends talk about something that we all know that each other know? It's like, what am I supposed to do? Is it really that bad? I'm, they're probably not okay. my friends anymore because of the situation. But listen, I, so this this is like a borderline joke, and this might just go into like maybe the brotherly love, another aspect why you know Damon you know takes a knockdown compared to Jamie. But wit overall, or like how Jamie, or excuse me, Damon makes jokes is pretty good. You know when he's him versus Corliss. Uh, we're not really Corliss, but he's just like, oh, shut the fuck up. Don't talk Otto about Hightower? Uh, Otto Hi- dude, Rose Otto. He's like, dude, you ne- I think you have an empty spot in your bed if you want a wife. I'm done with you know fucking this girl that people in the Vale would rather fuck sheeps over. You know, like, yikes. And then even Gerald Royce at the wedding, right? Where oh, dude, yeah. Like, like- I am uh, Gerald Royce. He's like, who? <laughs> so that, that one of the best scenes. <laughs> he for, tells him, like, yeah, my bronze bitch is dead, and I'm about to get all of your shit. I'm inheriting it as the husband. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't end up actually getting it, but I wish he did just to tie the, no put shit. the bow on top of that roast. Yeah, but I think mean, so then the wit-wise, if you compare him between Damon and Jamie, uh, Jamie has a, a bunch of good moments too where, you know, we, we talk about this moment between Ned and Jamie, this legendary moment in season one where Ned is like, oh, your armor's so shiny. You must, uh, I forgot what he says about the shiny armor. He's like, Hardly looks damaged or anything, and Jamie says, "I pick my opponents well." Or something. on the yeah. lines, well, he, I'm trying to remember. He's that, got a good, a lot of good one-liners is a thing. Oh, super, I know. super good one-liners, uh, but that's not necessarily wit. I guess it is, right? It's I just think thinking so. Yeah, it's just they're not that funny. Is the thing? It's more like a mic drop moment rather than like a <laughs> dude. This guy's fucking hilarious, and Damon has a lot of those moments. So yeah, 
Maybe uh, wit. Jamie, they're kind of tied with wit, but for I humor. Think, yeah, it's wit. But for humor. Oh, come on. Jamie has so many moments where he's imprisoned uh, by Rob Stark, right? And Catelyn comes in there and Rob oh, comes dude, in there. Dude, true. He's and roasting he, them. Roasting them. And then also <laughs> Brienne the whole oh. time he's roasting her. And plus, yeah. dude, the best joke of all, the things I do for love. Splat. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> Cersei probably died executed. laughing after that when the scene, when the scene <laughs> cut, dude. Oh, dude, yeah. Great moment by Jamie there. You know, but it, I'm trying to remember there's a couple lines that I really love in where, where Jamie is talking to Rob, I think, one of them. And so this is not in the book because neither of them are POV characters at this point. But Jamie was saying something about, like, I don't really see you with any women around here. It makes me think, like, you know, why you, why you come to <laughs> yeah. visit me? <laughs> it's just so good. Also, it's funny when Jamie makes a too soon joke about Ned, you know, poor old dead Ned. To, to Catelyn, because it's like, dude, I'm your enemy. Of course I'm going to make this joke, and I'm roasting you for it. But, uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, d- never mind. 180. Jamie takes it. 180? Jamie, yeah, Jamie yeah. takes it for sure. Damon has good moments, but, uh, yeah, Jamie takes this shit. Comment down below. What's your favorite line between Damon or Jamie, the, the best lines here? Because they both have legendary, great lines uh, between the two of them. But, you know, we, we talked about, I think, a little bit earlier as well, you know, who really controls them. And Damon really has nobody that controls him. He's kind of just on his own program. His brother doesn't even really control him at all. Maybe just tells him, like, suggests he should leave. But he's immediately back. And Jamie has his dad and sister. So is that a is that a knockdown because people kind of can influence Jamie? Or yeah, is maybe that a little something bit because like he has strong ties still to his family? Is that like a plus? Of, well, I think know, the I, dad I the dad that. angle is a is a plus because that's like respect for my clearly like Chadley more experienced elders. You know, like Tywin is a right. Is superior in all ways other than combat, you know, other than uh, combat to Jamie. So I think that's, hairline. Well, his hairline's amazing, right? Is, <laughs> especially, especially in the book. But um, yeah. I think I think so. It, with the Cersei thing, yeah, that might be a knock because you could say you could say Damon has the equivalent in Rhaenyra, but I don't think Damon gives a fuck about anything Rhaenyra has to say ever. Whereas I think Jamie would go to the ends of the earth for Cersei, unfortunately. But then again, you know, maybe I'm just tainted by the end of season eight, right? When Jamie yeah, does his right. shit, so I don't know. It's kind of hard yeah. to say. I'd say the Tywin thing is a plus. So maybe if the Cersei thing's a minus, you can just kind of neutralize it. Yeah, I don't know if, if Jamie gets away with cutting off like a Vayman esque character's head and gets away with it. You know, I feel like Jamie would be punished for it. So Damon having that ability kind of is a plus. You're like, yeah, I don't give a shit. What's what he's gonna do? My brother? Yeah, that guy. <laughs> I don't care. Well, yeah, but it, I think Damon. <laughs> but, okay, but what? what how much of that stuff do you think Damon got away with, though, just because his brother is king and his brother chose not to? Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Is that yeah, really a yeah. knock on, or is that really a plus for Damon, or is it just because he has, like, a weak-spirited brother who's like, I can't punish him. He's, he's my poor <laughs> little brother. So, you know, I don't know, man. Yeah. Uh, well, so, yeah. And so then Jamie, you know, he has his relationship with his sister, and if we want to compare, you know, lovers, you know, between Damon and Jamie, Jamie really only has one lover, and it's Cersei. And it's almost... Uh, by season eight in, in in Game of Thrones, of course, it seems very simple-like behavior. And uh, I, I don't like that. I, I hope that's not a, a note George R. R. Martin gave Dan and Dave to be like, yeah, this is actually what's going to happen. Because I don't like that ending for Jamie. At least how it's justified, right? Just like how yeah. Danny goes mad. I, I, I'm fine with that result occurring, but you got to give me something to build up to that and make it believable for me. But so many things are happening so quickly. But with Damon, right, he has, I mean, how many lovers does he have? You know, he has the worm. white worm. He has... Um, Lena. Uh, yeah, Lena. He Lena, has Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra, white worm. Oh, and... Ray no, he, Royce. He never, he never first got wife. with her, right? Or did he do it and never finish? She said he never finished. And maybe, okay, let us know if you want us to make this video. You know, you guys have... Li- you know, listen this far. You're the real fans, right? Now. Right, right, okay. right. You got to let, let us know. Hey, shh, this is between us. Do you want us to make this Damon? Uh, what was the. We thought about this Demon before. Demon retention, right? Demon retention grind set? D- yeah, D- Damon retention grind set. Yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. We talk about basically in defense of Damon because everyone's like, Damon can't perform. He can perform. <laughs> he just doesn't want to perform. He chooses not to. They're not worthy of him. Yeah. yeah, dude, he's a high value man. Like, you can't be stooping to these levels. But, you know, that's kind of. <laughs> Pivot over to Jamie on that same front. Like, listen, I know it's I know it's his sister and everything, but she is supposed to be a specimen in the books, like the most beautiful woman in the right. Seven Kingdoms. And uh, listen, monogamy is kind of based, and Damon is incestuous as fuck as well. So I don't know, man. I kind of I think this is also kind of a lean toward Jamie moment. 
I, I'm leaning towards Jamie also because Cersei's his twin, and then when they were younger, they kind of were interchangeable. They thought they looked so similar. So I'm wondering, um, like, oh, dude, it's self appreciation. <laughs> yeah, it's just still, respect like, oh, for this yourself. Me as a woman, oh, this is hot. <laughs> it's the best thing I've ever seen. It's just masturbation, right? Yeah, dude, absolutely. Yeah. It's like looking in a mirror. Like you've no one, you never jerked off looking in a mirror. Come on, anybody who says that's lying. <laughs> Unsubscribe. I never jerked off in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's like into the corner too. You know, like two mirrors that meet in the corner, so you can look to the right yeah. and the left, and you get like an infinite, infinite versions of yourself. Yeah, you can see you from behind. Like you're like, oh, look at that creep over there jerking off. Yeah. I'm gonna watch him. I'm gonna um, jerk off and watch him. <laughs> there's a there's a uh, line in. I'm, I'm rereading Feast for Crows right now, so I'm doing my reread and. Jamie's talking about, you know, because he just heard from Tyrion that uh, Cersei's having sex with uh, Lancel, uh, Lannister, and also one of the Kettleblacks. And he goes into detail about thinking about how it would look because he's seen that one of the Kettleblacks naked because he's part of the Kingsguard. Yeah. He's, he's like, yeah, he's like this, you know, hairy chest. He's thinking about him thrusting against Cersei. I'm like, dude, he, he's, he hates it, right? So he's not enjoying this by any means. But I'm like, dude, it, it goes into detail Jamie thinking about what Cersei, how Cersei's feeling in the bedroom. I'm like, Jamie, don't linger on that thought, my guy. I'm starting to, <laughs> you're starting to drop points for me. But yeah, um, I think oh, I have no, to lean it, towards. It's, that's just like intrusive thoughts winning. You know what I mean? It's like, right. tor- it's torturous and it's Westeros, man. Like there's no technology to distract you. It's like, you're not gonna be able to ward off those thoughts forever. It's like, oh no. Oh, he's so hairy. Oh, it's rubbing up against Cersei's chest. Like, oh, he just finished inside her. Oh, I just tasted it. You know, it's like. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Honestly, I've had worse. Okay, okay. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. We're just going to go into a little bit what happens with Damon here in uh, Fire and Blood. So they might change it uh, for the show. But that's your last warning. Spoiler alert. I, I think you got to side with Damon if you go how their characters end. If you compare book Damon to the end of uh, Game of Thrones show Jamie. Like, Damon goes out allegedly like a badass, and Jamie goes out like a fucking simp, right? At that point, you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This oh boy. I almost this just reject worst. this comparison wholesale because we don't know the true end, quote unquote, true end of uh, of the Jamie's story, and we arguably do know the true end of Damon's story. So yeah, it's kind of hard for me to say, make a definitive point. But yeah, if we go by what you just said, dude, Damon, man, yeah, spoiler alert, like he said, dude, Amon, the little sharp chin bitch, and hey, yo, chill what? out with that. I love Amon. <laughs> okay, okay, Char- that's fine. sharp chin bitch. Uh, d- Sharp Chin Chad. He's the Giga Chad. Okay, remind the me. The one-eyed Chad. I, I don't think so. Yeah, the one-eyed wonder. <laughs> Fucking sapphire eye. Super cool, dude. But no, dude, they, they basically challenge him to a 1v1. I think Eamon arrives or whatever. He's like, I heard you were looking for me, uncle. Or no, us. What do he say? I forget. I think he brings, oh, yeah. the, he brings he, an he, army. He, I forget the line, but Damon basically says, like, oh, no, I'm just waiting for you, boy, or whatever. And then oh, that. Yeah, Southern action. Hey, I'm just waiting wait for you, boy. sitting around this wood here in Harrenhal. I'm just wondering when you and your little... <laughs> Nasty ass Al Shriver's gonna show up, boy. You little shriveled up fucking dragon <laughs> piece of shit. Let's get this done, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Ding. He spits on a gong, right? The blacks will rise again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. Anyway, they go up and they spiral with each other, and one dragon kills the other dragon, and Damon leaps from his dragon onto Eamon's dragon and stabs him right in the fucking eye and takes them both down to the ground. So. Uh, yeah, but, but we don't see Damon's body. No. Okay, does this change for you if Damon lives and he goes out and lives somewhere in Essos? Does that change your view on this situation? It Does it lower it at all? Uh, the only, well, if for, if for no other reason, then it's like kind of almost like against what I understand his character to be at this point. Like, so what, now he decides to like go and live a humble life? Like, how weird is that? If it was a different type of character, like if this was Jamie and this happened to him, I would almost accept that. Because, like, he's been through so much in his life. He's one-handed now. He is known as the King Slayer. Maybe Cersei's dead. But Damon's too angsty. I, I wouldn't believe it. Especially knowing the show, man, they would have him go and, like, meet up with Nettles or some shit, and they're, like, starting their yep. life together. It'd be embarrassing. So, no, I, I hope that wouldn't happen. All right. Yeah, so I think besides, you know, of course, this uh, the drip and the way he goes out, uh, that's the way Damon won there. But ever, everything else here, I think we're, we're signed with Jamie. Jamie is the... The better swordsman, the better hairstyle, better nickname, better love life potentially, wittier, has a better family relationship. Yeah, and I think uh, overall character too. We don't we get to see like really a character arc. We don't really get character arcs within you know 
Fire and Blood, so we'll see within the TV show uh, for House of the Dragon how Damon's character arc goes, because I think he's going to be a little more of a wandering guy by the end of uh, the Dance of Dragons combat where he eventually, you know, takes out Aemon, but... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I, I think he's Jamie. better. Yeah, I think he's better. Than everybody. I also think one more point too. I just get the vibe. This is conjecture. I get the vibe that Jamie's just healthier. I think his diet is probably way more on point than oh, Damon's. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I feel like he's eating yeah. well. They have like lush, nutrient dense fruit. They're definitely not short on meat. Whereas Damon, he's almost like that cringe parkour kid in high school. Like hasn't eaten in three days. Not because he can't. Just because he's. I don't know, maybe he's smoking or something, so his appetite's suppressed. I don't know. That's just <laughs> yeah, kind of the vibe I get. I think Jamie's a healthier dude. Healthier dude. Also, if you were to Damon was to lose his dragon, and maybe I'm trying to think of something that would be so significant, maybe his hand as well, or something about him that would make him a significantly less capable fighter. I wonder how he would react because Jamie like just tries to pick it up and continue on. You know, he's commander of the King's Guard, and he's like, you know, listen, I'm gonna change my way i'm gonna be more honorable guy it's for the better that he loses his hand character wise i don't know if damon reacts the same way you know if he loses his dragon and his ability to fight that maybe that's the maybe that's what they're going on the show like you're talking about he goes off to essos and lives a simpler life because it was all in the dragon man it's like samson with his hair it's like when you shave when yeah. you shave the dragon from his body it's, yeah it's like all of his angst goes away oh and uh last point for damon you know just like a honorary mention children Damon's children are like a million times better than uh, than Jamie's kids. Oh yeah, Jamie's back, Joffrey, Tom, and back Jack Drew on that one. And it, both are uh, fathers of kings, so cool enough. Two sons became kings. Eh, shut the fuck up. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and smash that like button. Or not, we don't care. <laughs>